this uh, one thing, guitar, uh, the, the music and guitar sounds really good. You guys really enjoyed that this morning, both Joe here's offering and, uh, and the regular offering. Uh, but of course, this Wednesday, we do have the Bible studies at 6.30. If you're able to attend, that's been a blessing. And like, like Dad said, we really appreciate it. You to hear Kyle's testimony last Wednesday. Uh, this Friday, uh, there is a cakewalk for Evan. It is at 6.30 at the Women's Building. That's over just below the bridges. So that's uh, 6.30, as you can see, a hamburger, a hot dog, chips, and a drink are $10. So if you're able to come out and support that, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, this upcoming Sunday, uh, we will have the Lord's Supper, and then we also have uh, the Nursing Home Sunday. So if you're able to join us for that, uh, that too is a blessing, and uh, the old people also seem to enjoy it there. And then otherwise, we got PBS upcoming, and so we'll have some puppet shows, all that good stuff. Uh, some of it, uh, yep, uh, fun, fun time. And that is all I have. Let's elevate to our feet here. Yep. Yeah. Y'all was ready for me to say stand up, aren't you? Yeah. Mixing it up. Mixing it up.
talked about Acts 2 today. We went over at Sunday school and it makes me think the gift of the Holy Spirit right there and the pouring out and Peter's like, you know, and them men and it says their hearts were pricked. And that just means they were pierced. They were convicted. And they said, what can we do to have this gift? What can we do to have this salvation? Boy, and it was the Holy Spirit, right? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Firm foundation.
look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. When we, winning the battle in your mind. Really, most of us, we be honest with ourselves, and most of the thing in our lives, it's the way we think. Mm -hmm. And our mind gives us the most trouble. The battle is interior. You know, there's a lot of things that uh, we're a threefold being. We have a spiritual, whether you receive Christ or not, you have a spirit. It may not be the spirit of Christ, but it's the spirit. And when you receive Christ, you have the spirit of Christ. And then your mind, and of course your physical effect, and they can all affect one another. If you have, you know, I was just thinking, uh, and, and I think, I say this in a way I think on this, you know, there's something, you know, just not long ago, I went and had removed the, the back of my neck. And, you know, it's really nice. I, I was telling my wife for the last day, seemed like for a while I had headaches, just couldn't get rid of them. And I don't know where that was just in my head. <laughs> but literally they went away and I'm very thankful for that because it's very hard to focus on something sometimes physically, but there's the spiritual. Now in Second Corinthians 10, 4, 10, 4 and 5, it says, for the, for the weapons of our warfare are, fair, are not carnal but mighty through God, pulling down strongholds. Now, this is an intentional act. There's some things that's going on in your mind, that's going on in my mind, that we have to intentionally pull down. There's strongholds in our life. They're pulling us back. They're hurting us. They're harming us. Yes. And you have to go out to us with the intentional nature, with allowing God to help you to tear down certain ideals. And then it says to cast down. In other words, you just you, you break them. You cast them down. And every high, high thing that exists that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. In other words, if it raises higher than God's minds, God's thoughts, those ideals are to put in their proper place. This is how we feel, but this is not truth. See, feeling and truth are don't always walk together. Now our line, it says, Commit thyself in the Lord, delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of the heart. It don't mean that God's going to be minding your magic genie. As we delight ourselves in Him, we begin to submit more to His thoughts and subject ourselves. And it said, bring into captivity those thoughts that harm us. And you know what your thoughts are. I know what my thoughts are. Some of the things that battle me. And ever thought to the obedience of Christ. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Father, for your goodness. Pray that you just help me. Just uh, bring across what you have me to say in the way that you have me to say it. Thank you, Father, for your goodness in Jesus' name. First of all, identify the thoughts. You know, one of the things, and Jay or Josiah and Johnny, a lot of times, identify the lies that you're believing that are harming you. I'll go on and add that. The things that you know, because see, everything that Christ has in his mind, he don't give us rules and stuff like that just because he can, and he can, he's God. But he does protect us and help us. The things that, and I was thinking about this as I was looking at things in my life that tend to harm me, lead me astray. You know, and ever, the devil's most powerful lies have got some truth mixed in. Sometimes I always think, man, I haven't got enough time. I haven't got time to do this. And so far it puts me in a rush, sort of a panic mode. And there's truth in that. I am limited time. There is a lot to do. But the fact of it is, get to the truth. I could use, still use my time a lot wiser. And I could allow, put it in subjection of God. But there's lies in your life. And sometimes another thing that I, I was saying in the truth that, that's got partial truth. Sometimes dread. You ever get in your mind and you worry about this or that. Things that are going to happen. And it, it bobs you down. And they never will happen, but they're hurting you in the present tense. And there are certain things that you need to identify, I need to identify in my life that's harming you and cast them down. Intentionally attack them. And then number two, replace them. In other words, John 3, 8, 32 says, 
and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. As we begin to submit ourselves to God's truth rather than what we believe. See, again, it's not about your and my faith. You say, I believe this very strongly. You've heard me say this many times. It don't really matter what you believe and I believe if it's not based on something solid. And I, I seen a quote the other day, I, I uh, read this about, you know, the truth don't mind being challenged or questioned. Mm -hmm. A lie gets very offended when you <clears throat> even question it. So the truth will stand, it can be tested. You can stand on it, you can sit on it, it's solid. So look at God's word and allow God's word and God's spirit to replace his truth versus the lies that the devil tries to plant in our heart that are based on some truth. Now, as we look in here, Philippians 4 a, won't you just, it says, finally, brother, he says basically, finally, after I've told you all this, and you need to read verse 4, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? Now, both of those are very important. Honesty, it's hard to get in a lot of trouble in your life unless you learn to lie, is it not? Sure. So always try to be honest. And then it says, what sort of things are just? Always look, try to look at life in a fair, when you treat other people, treat them in a fair, positive manner the best you can allow Christ to teach you. And then it says, what sort of things are pure? You know, there's a big difference in love and lust. <laughs> And sometimes this world sometimes has confused. Lust is all about us, what we want. Love is about loving unconditionally. And then it says, what sort of things are lovely? And what sort of things are good for poor? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Do it intentionally. Be careful of the things that are in our life that create negative thoughts or feed negative thoughts because our, as we think, so we go. And that was in uh, the fir very first one in the Proverbs. It says 23.7. If you pull that back up, Jay, let's go back and get that. Because you need to understand the way we're thinking. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat, drink, saith he to thee, for his heart is not with thee. As we think, it will direct our steps. Make no mistake about it. If we don't change, in fact, there's a place in Jeremiah, he's talking about the children of Israel. And he, they're doing certain things, and he says, and certain, their heart is going a certain way. He said, hey guys, if you don't stop, and I'm paraphrasing a lot here, if you don't turn it over or change, he said, I'm going to deliver you over to preach your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that a lot. We are basically delivered over to the fruit of our thoughts. So allow God to change your thinking, therefore changing your direction. Replace those lies. And then Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Continually open up your mind, open up our mind, so we allow Christ to change our ideas. Always be teachable in your life. Man, certain stages of my life, and I do this over and over again, I get too smart. Yeah. Not literally. Just in my mind, I'm not allowing God to continually correct me, and God resists the proud, but give the grace to the humble. So be teachable in your life. Let him put Christ's mind in you. And then number three, train your mind with truth over and over again. And Psalms 119, verse 11, he says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I believe it's very important that to allow his word to encompass in your mind. It's very important to read. It's very important to study. It's very important to meditate, to think on it. Let him change your thoughts through his words. If you have an ideal and it contradicts what God says in his word, Allow his word to change you and not you and me try to change God's word. A lot of times people won't, you hear their truth. No, there is truth, God's truth. It's not my truth, it's not your truth, it's his truth. And so let our mind can be conformed to truth. In Joel 3.10, let 
another thing I want to, and Joel 310, they were basically attacked, they fixed to be attacked, and they were farmers. They weren't really warriors. And God, he said, beat your plowshares <coughs> in the swords and your plying pruning hooks in the spears. Now, he's telling them what ready to do. And make no mistake about it, these people had, don't you think they had a sense of panic that they were having people fixing to come, conquer their land? And they were all farmers. They're not warriors. And then he told them, he said, go ahead and make your weapons. Prepare yourself. It's very important for us to prepare ourselves. Physically, mentally, and spiritually. Life is intentional. And then it says, let the weak say, and I'm strong. Now what does God say? It, it, you think he's saying, hey, lie to yourself, take yourself. But I want to tell you something. There's a powerful thing. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. The more you speak it, the more you give it life. Now, always something I've done, We I've tried to, at certain days, I take the grandkids, try to three at a time, four at the most, because it's hard for me to watch them, but, you know, get a little bit of, just enjoying themselves. But the other day, I was saying, there's something that we can't say on this trip. Easton, what did Papa tell you, James, what did Papa say you couldn't say on the trip? You're hot or you're cold. You're hot or you're cold. <laughs> uh, there's Rocker right there. You're hot or you're cold. You say, well, that's silly. Maybe silly. But the more you focus on it being hot, the hotter it becomes. Sure, it's hot. But James, or Riker, you're hot. Are you hot? I'm what? Tough. You're tough. <laughs> I said, focus how tough you are. We're going we're to enjoy the day. We're going to just get out and we're going to play just like it's normal. Eventually, we, we hiked and we did, and they had a good time. Then we went to the pool. But what I'm saying, some things, don't give certain things that's got strongholds in our mind extra power by giving them words. It's an easy thing to get to complain about this, that, and the other verbally that you can't change anyway. So be careful that we learn to say, let the weak say that I'm strong. The grace of God, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. And allow those things not to have power. And then, then the next one, here's a very important thing. Not only do we learn to get in the habit, you know one of the things in our marriage, and I'll focus on this, we really tried, and especially over the last several years, we've just tried to change how we speak to each other. That it's more kind, it's more gracious, it's less hard. Now, do we fail every once in a while? But you start somewhere. You just learn to speak and speak life into each other. And you also learn to speak life into yourself. Now, the next thing is not only commit your works on the Lord that your thoughts be, be established. Now, after we've learned, we've identified it because you've got to be honest uh, with yourself. That's why I stand on the scale. I look and see where I'm at. I gotta be honest with wherever I'm at in that way. I gotta be honest where I'm ever at in whatever area I'm at. I gotta know where I'm at where I can change it. So I gotta identify it. I gotta replace. Now, it's not a good thing necessarily, I wanna get on that point, to quit habits. <clears throat> They last if you exchange habits. If you've got a real negative habit in your life, exchange it with something positive rather than just trying to quit it. It would be a lot more. And then be careful that we rehearse and we practice. Then commit our works unto the Lord that our thoughts may establish. Proverbs 16 3. We act upon it. We make small changes in our life that make a big, huge difference over a long period of time. You know, one of the things Bill does, Bill, how many miles do you walk a day? Three? I remember years ago, 
Bill had some health issues. And he just made a commitment that what would help him with those health issues is start walking. Bill, did that help your health issues? Yes. And he went to the doctor not long ago, and William was telling me this statement, but I think Bill said it too. They was at first thinking there was a lot wrong with him. And Bill said, man, I sure feel good to have all that wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> and come to find out, he was more right than they. <laughs> at least that, that's the way, so far we know, right? <laughs> But a learn to make small adjustments in your life. I, I tell you, it, it's a secular book, but the compound effect of just making small statements. He said, just cut 150, 15 calories off your diet a day. It'll make a huge difference over a long period of time. And there's so I say in certain things spiritually, and somebody was saying, well, I don't read my Bible. Well, I'd encourage you. It's a very good thing to learn to do to get to find out what God you said. If you don't read any, read a verse. Just read in a verse. Allow God to create a hunger in you. If you just read a little and let Him increase your hunger rather than reading a bunch and start where you're not going to keep up, do a little. Just go... You heard me say this because it's one of my favorite statements because it's very much true. Life is not about perfection. You and I will never, ever arrive. Yeah. It's about the direction we're headed. Wherever you're heading, wherever I'm heading, if I don't change words, which way I'm heading, I'm going to get where I'm heading. So I ask you and I, do we want to get where we're, the direction we're going? Or we want to adjust it? And then points, oh, uh, 1 Corinthians 9 27. Let's read that too. It, Paul's saying this. He said, I put my body under subjection. In other words, I don't let my body. You ever notice sometimes what your body screams out for is not the best things for? He said, I put my body under subjection. I don't let it rule me. I rule it. I, I'm doing this intentionally. He said, and bringing this subjection, he says, I'm controlled, not that, not the certain things I want. He said, lest by any means I have to treat, preach to others and I myself have become a castaway. Now I believe what that mainly referred to is you look in Jeremiah and it's talking about, and also in Romans, it's talking about the vessels that God uses. There's vessels under honor and dishonor. And he said, when a vessel is dirty and it just can't be clean no more, eventually they take it over and the potter just casts them and breaks that vessel all to pieces. It's not usable. It can't hold water. It can't be a blessing to your life, my life, and others. So be careful that we commit our works on the Lord. And then die daily to these ideals. 1 Samuel 15, 23 and then we'll get 1 Corinthians 15, 31. But 15, 23, it says, now here's some things that in your life, there's some things that we have to be careful with. That you know, I know, is a wrong way to think. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Now I'm not in the business of allowing God to change my life, and He's God, and I'm just under Him. Witchcraft is somebody that manipulates a higher power to do their will. But see, when there's things rebellious in our life that we intentionally, we know it's wrong. We know it's wrong kind of thinking. And we don't bring it in subjection. We don't intentionally cast those things down. It'll bring us to that. So be careful of the things you and I that we know that we ought to think better that we're allowed to stay in our mind. And then it says, and here's another one. And stubbornness, oh, excuse me. And stubbornness is as the iniquity of idolatry. And I've seen this in my life. There's things that I, you know, I'm very, very, very consistent and faithful generally. Now that may sound good, it's true, it's my strength, but it's also my weakness. 
What about you is your strength, but also your weakness? Because generally, if you're really, really faithful, you can be very stubborn. And allow God to change your mind or it'll make you an idolater. It'll make you fall in love with something else. And it can be, listen, I thank the Lord for church. I thank the Lord for religion. It's a wonderful servant. It's a horrible master. But it'll get you serving religious activity rather than holy God. Is there a difference? There's a huge difference. And most of you, if you've been in this for a long time, You've been in and out a little bit of both, if we be honest with ourselves. But be careful that we're not stubborn. Because thou hast rejected the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to change you. Don't change it according to what you think. He has also rejected thee from being king. He said, that's all you can't be king no more. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 31. I reject I protest by your rejoicing, which I am in Christ. Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. Now, one of the things that I do when I'm doing well, and something that you probably didn't like, when you get along and you every day and you sub try to submit your ideals, when I get into God's Word saying, teach me, show me, grow me, it transforms my ideals little by little. When I get into God's Word, and here's a dangerous way of thinking. When I read this verse, and I think, wow, that would really help Brother Jeff. Probably would. <laughs> it probably would. But Brother Jeff needs to think that, not me, right? Amen. Y'all see what I'm saying? When you get into God's Word, and you're in God's Word, and you're thinking, Wow, if that particular group could only read this. Y'all ever been there, done that? Wow, I wonder if they've ever heard that before. <coughs> rather, now we're outside, rather than God changing us. We're dying, the Word of God should be dying daily to our ideals, to our thoughts, to allow this mind that's in Christ Jesus becoming us. And now we've got outside it and we're correcting everybody else. See, God's Word is most effective when it's shared rather than pushed down people's throat. And as God gives this opportunity that we can be a help to somebody. Somebody use this illustration. I'll close with this. If I had some wonderful good cookies Cookies sound better when you've not been eating as many sweets, too. That's why sometimes you don't give stuff like, but if I had some cookies, and then I say, Nina, would you like a cookie? <laughs> and I say, yeah, I mean, this is a good cookie. And they watch me eat the cookie, and they're like, ah, oh, that's a good cookie. See, when they see something work in our life, they want it. Now, if Riker's not ready for a cookie, and here's the way we do some kind of religion, Riker, you want a cookie? Say no. I know that's uh, I know that's going to change. But when I say, yeah, Riker, you need this cookie. Riker, you need this cookie, buddy. <laughs> what I'm saying, if we're not careful, we'll offer Christ like that. We'll try to force that cookie down people's throat rather than them seeing through our life how good he is. You know, if I, my desire, one of the things that I pray to die daily, I don't have to exaggerate how good Jesus has been to me. Richard says, let me tell you about my Jesus. Well, Amen. Man, my Jesus has not just been a difference in my life. He's the difference Amen. in my life. Amen. My greatest need is to reflect him the way he is. Amen. Sometimes I'm just not the representative that I should be for him. And perhaps that's the case with you or no. But the first thing we begin to catch down the thoughts that are harming us. Thank you. God bless you.
pray, dear Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to take the words that we've heard here today and apply them to our lives, dear Lord, and, and not to try to put it off on the next person, but Lord, to, to say, Lord, it's me. Father, standing in need. And, yeah. Father, take us through the week and bless each and every family, Lord. Bless those who are unable to be here. Bring us all safely home and bring us all back together again. Yes, Jesus is holy and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.